I'm back, baby. Back from vacation and back to bringing you two on this lunchtime tips with a dungeon master, only on Polyhedra Paradise. Welcome to Polyhedral Paradise. If you're new to the channel, please like, subscribe, and share if you like the content. We do this as much as we can during our lunch break. Our, well, mine. But uh, sometimes days get a little tough and it gets hard to get content out. Like today, honestly, I'm running a little bit late, but hey, what are you gonna do? Uh, we also do up late with the Dungeon Master Wednesday night. As far as regular content, we're going to be diving into the world of Ravenloft soon with an Exploring Ravenloft series. And we're going to be building a campaign from the ground up with you. And if you want to be a part of that, find out how. Watch up late with the Dungeon Master on Wednesday. Now I'm starting late recording, so today is going to be a really quick show. We're going to deal with two issues regarding hit points. And stay tuned to the end of the video. I'm going to show you something special that I shot while I was on vacation regarding, uh, let's just say, spatial perceptions and reality. So the first thing that I want to talk regarding hit points is uh, monstrous hit points. And this is more for the DM. Now you look in the book, it gives you the hit die that you can use or it gives you the base number for a creature. Well, I, I want to encourage everybody to really, really vary the amount of hit points that your creatures have. Sometimes we get into a lock where we have a certain amount of creatures and you know we have um, you know, say 10 goblins and we give them all the same hit points just to, just to make things easier on us. Um, but I want to encourage you to, to really like switch that up. Uh, no matter how many creatures you have, just like, you know, give some of them two hit points, give some of them ten. Give them a real wide range. It really, it really fosters a sense of reality in your players where, oh, that goblin got taken out by one hit, but, you know, that took two or three. Yeah, because in the real world, things have different strengths. They have different, uh, you know, the amount of uh, mana damage they can take. So reflect that in your creatures as well. Don't make it seem so robotic. Like, this is what they have, this is what they do, this is how you uh, attack them. Robotic hands and all. You know? The other thing I want to talk about is the way we track hit points in combat. So typically, you start out with your number of hit points, say it's 50, and every time a creature gets hit, we subtract those hit points off and we you mark it down as such. But I've found that an easier way to keep track of hit points is you start with the number of hit points they have, let's just use, keep with this example 50, and then you slowly add up the number of hits they take. So if the first attack causes five hit points, you write a five down. Next attack causes seven, you add a, you know, add seven to that and ends up with 12, and so on and so forth. So you work your way up to that hit point number rather than starting with a hit point number and working your way down. It's easier on the fly for me, and I found for a lot of people, to do addition than it is subtraction. So it's just a little hint. And like I said, today is gonna be really quick. But it's just a small little thing you can add to your game mechanics that maybe speed it up a little bit and make things easier to track in your mind. Now if you're a player, you can do this too. You just write your max hit points in and leave the space blank. And then as you take a hit, then you write down the number of hit points that, or number of damage that you received. And you can keep track of it that way. So just keep in mind that you know you won't be in danger when you hit zero now, you'll be in danger when you hit 50 or when you hit 40, and that's when you have to worry about making your death save. It's just a different way of tracking hit points, but it adds a different flavor, a different personal touch to your game. So that's it for today, guys. I know it was a short video, but I was running late on time, but I didn't want too much time to get past without putting out another one of the videos, and it feels great to get back into the saddle again. So a couple channel notes, uh, we're doing our dice box giveaway at 100 subs and we are at the Bon Jovi number, we are halfway there baby. I appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown me, we're a young and growing channel and I thank you guys again for being a part of it. Uh, look forward to up late with the Dungeon Master Wednesday night, which if you're watching this video on Wednesday, it is tonight. And stay tuned to the end of the credits for that little thing that I shot on vacation that uh, I find pretty interesting as far as perspective goes. So. Thanks again for watching, and as always, in the game of life, may all your roles be with advantage.
So the next time your 13 dexterity rogue tells me he's got the gravitas to climb a cliff face, and I tell you, I don't know that that's going to work that well, you know what I'm talking about. It's kind of hard to scale up a cliff face without some sort of help, be it magic or some equipment. So if I set the difficulty modifier at 25, meaning nearly impossible, because you want to do it without equipment, then don't get mad at me. Because do you see this thing? Yeah. It's not going to happen without some sort of help.